By convention sweet, by convention bitter, by convention hot, by convention cold, by convention color, but in reality, atoms and void. Hello. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the atomists, um, these two Greek philosophers, Eucipius and Democritus. I'm reading their work out of a pre-Socratics reader. So the atomists basically... This was another sort of response to the problem created by Parmenides when he argued that everything in the universe is static, that things don't change, that they nothing gets added, nothing gets taken away, etc., etc. Um, Anaxagoras and Empedocles attempted to resolve this problem, um, and then Lucipius and Democritus come along and they develop their own particular way of getting around this problem. So, what a pre-Socratics reader says, uh, Patricia Kurd, in the, the introductory portion to the atomists, he says the word at, atomos in Greek means uncuttable. And so, atoms are things that cannot be cut up or actually divided or split. The atomists claimed that there were an infinite number of these atoms, each of which was uniform, eternal, and unchangeable, and so a genuine being in the Parmenidean sense. Individual atoms are imperceptible and differ from one another only in shape and size. These atoms move in a void. The word for void in Greek means empty. The atomists identified the void with the nothing, or not being, that Parmenides had proscribed. But it should be noted that the atomists insisted that nothing, or not being, the void, was real, rather than just the negation of what was. Void allowed the atoms to move and to come together without melding into one another. In reality, atoms never touch, but simply come very close to one another as they move in the void. The coming together and separating of atoms, the real, the, b the basic entities of the theory, is responsible for all the aspects of the sensible world, and so what looks like coming to be or passing away is really only alteration and rearrangement. So in this sense, it is somewhat like Anaxagoras and Empedocles, who, remember, argued that, or basically argued that, um, the, the stuff of the universe is eternal and unchanging. What happens is that it gets mixed in different combinations. So the elements blend together in different ways. Uh, Leucipius and Democritus come along and they're like, actually, it's a little more definite than that. There's these atoms, right? And there are these shaped things, whatever it is. Tiny, microscopic. They didn't have the concept of microscopes, but you know what I mean. Um, so tiny, it's imperceptible to the human eye, but everything is made up of them in different combinations. They latch together and then they separate latch together, separate in different combinations and things like this, and that's how everything's formed. So that's the basic concept of atomism. Um, and the thing is, this is really kind of forward-looking in terms of, of understanding how physics works from a modern perspective, right? Um, so one of the things that they say, no thing happens at random, but all things as a result of a reason and by necessity. So clearly they are working in a world of physical laws, right? In which everything has a cause. Everything that occurs, everything that exists is motivated by something. The question is, can you figure out what that thing is? So um, I'm going to read you three relatively lengthy passages from them that lay out their sort of basic uh, conceptions. Um, as well as some, some of Aristotle's commentary on them, because the, all three of these come from, from Aristotle. Uh, the first from the metaphysics, the second from on generation and corruption, and the third from on Democritus. So, uh, this is the first bit. The Cepius and his associate Democritus declare the full, uh, the full and the empty, which is the void, to be the elements, calling the former what is and the other what is not. Of these, the one, what is, is full and solid. The other, what is not, is empty, void, and rare. This is why they say that there is uh, that what is is no more than what is not, because the void is no less than a body than body is. 
These are the material causes of existing things. They declare that the differences among these are the causes of the rest. Moreover, they say that the differences are three, shape, arrangement, and position. For they say that what is, dif what is differs only in rhythm, touching, and turning. And of these, rhythm is shape, touching is arrangement, and turning is position. For A, uh, for A differs from N in shape, AN from NA in arrangement, and Z from N in position. Concerning the origin and manner of motion of, in existing things, these men too, like the rest, lazily neglected to give an account. That last bit is Aristotle's editorial commentary. But this is sort of the basic idea, right? Is that everything is composed of these tiny structures, uh, these atoms, and what determines their appearance within the world that we perceive is... Um, the the shape of the individual atoms, the way that they connect to one another or don't connect to one another, and then their relative positions. The next uh, fragment here. After making the shapes, Democritus and Lucipius make alteration and coming to be out of them, coming to be in destruction by means of separation and combination, alteration by means of arrangement and position. Since they held that the truth is in the appearance, and appearances are opposite and unlimited, they made the shapes unlimited, so that by reason of changes to, of the composite, the same thing seems opposite to different people, and it shifts position when a small amount is mixed in, and it appears completely different when one thing shifts position. For tragedy and comedy come to be out of the same letters. So again, the same basic idea here, that everything that exists is made up of these atoms and what determines their appearance to outside observers is the organization and the arrangement within particular positions. The last fragment I'm going to read you. Democritus believes that the nature of the eternal things is small beings unlimited in multitude. As a place for these, he hypothesizes something else, unlimited in size, and he calls the, the place by the names void, nothing, and unlimited, or infinite. And he calls each of the substances hing and compact and what is. He holds that the substances are so small that they escape our senses. They have all kinds of forms and shapes and differences in size. Out of these as elements, he generates and combines visible and perceptible bodies. These substances contend with one another and move in the void on account of their dissimilarity and the other differences I have mentioned, and as they move, they strike against one another and become entangled in a way that makes them be in contact and close to one another, but does not make anything out of them that is truly one, for it is quite foolish to think that two or more things could ever come to be one. The grounds he gives for why the substances stay together up to a point are that the bodies fit together and hold each other fast. For some of them are rough, some are hooked, some con others concave and others convex, while yet others have innumerable other differences. So he thinks that they cling to each other and stay together until some stronger necessity comes along from the environment and shakes them and, sh and scatters them apart. He describes the generation and its contrary separation, not only for animals but also for plants, cosmoi, and altogether for all perceptible bodies. So this is the basic thing. And again, it is very much moving toward the modern scientific conception of atoms, right? And today we have the technology to, to sort of view things at the atomic level, the subatomic level, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We know, or we think we know, how atoms generally work, um, what their components are, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, and we, we now have a better sense of what holds different atoms together to form substances, etc., etc. Um, but for people who couldn't see atoms, they did a pretty fucking good job anticipating what atoms are and how they actually function, right? Because while atoms are not necessarily all different shapes and whatever, right? The way that... that Leucapius and Democritus imagined them to be, they kind of are, right? 
um, because different atoms are made up of different combinations of molecules or something like that. I don't know. I'm not a science person. I've said that before. I'll never be a science person. Um, but right, we have different atomic structures. And so in that sense, there is kind of there is kind of a difference. What we what we now sort of understand is that it's not a question of, well, this one's got sort of a hooked bit and this one's got sort of a ring bit and the hook has sort of hooked in there and they're going to stay together and form some matter until something comes along and shakes them apart and they, they come apart. It's about forces of attraction and repulsion and whatever it is. I don't know. Um, but basically, like, again... If you keep in mind that the Keepius and Democritus could not see this, this was like pure speculation about what the nature of stuff might be. They did a bang up job, I think.